Hello, everyone. Welcome to our electromagnetic simulation for design and analysis of antennas and microwave RF components webinar. We have a great webinar planned, so let's get started. My name is Wayne Tanner. I'll be your host for this event. I am the Chief Operating Officer at Adaptive, and I also manage our simulation line of business. Our speaker for today's webinar is Narayan Ballou. Narayan is a solution consultant at Dassault Systems and is located in Boston, Massachusetts. His expertise lies in high-frequency electromagnetic simulation. So here's our agenda for today. First, we're going to do some introductions. Then we'll talk about antennas for IoT and 5G communication, discuss solutions for antenna design and simulation, and how to simulate installed antenna performance. We will also review filters and RF components and follow that up with some Q&A. So first, let me introduce Adaptive. Adaptive is a digital to physical product lifecycle company. We provide solutions throughout the entire product lifecycle from ideation and design, product simulation, virtual manufacturing, additive manufacturing, and inspection and metrology. We tie all of this together with our enterprise collaboration and business intelligence platform, creating that end-to-end -end digital thread. With that, I'll now turn it over to Narayan. Hello, welcome everybody. Um, thank you, Wayne, for the introduction. My name is Narayan, and I'll be uh, taking you forward with the rest of the webinar here. So if you look at electromagnetic application areas for Simulia CST, um, we can broadly categorize them into five different categories. Microwave, RF, and optical would be the focus for today's webinar. Uh, other strong areas for CST are EMC, EMI, which includes radiated emissions from PCBs, enclosures, full systems or vehicles, conducted emissions and susceptibility of cables and connectors, electrostatic discharge, as well as electromagnetic environmental effects, such as lightning strikes, EMP, etc. The EDA segment addresses power integrity, signal integrity of high-speed digital electronics, as well as EMC rule check for PCBs. Partic particle dynamics phenomenon, such as charged particle effects in particle accelerators, corona discharge, and multipaction can be simulated. Finally, Applications such as transformers, chokes, touchscreen sensors, motors, and generators would fall under the low frequency or the static segment. Our flagship solver is time domain based on the finite integration technique and is a robust high fidelity broadband solver suitable for a wide range of applications. Frequency domain solver is based on finite element method and is suitable for narrow band highly resonant and electrically small applications. The integral equations-based solver is on the method of moments or the MLFMM method for solving electrically large structures dominated by metal. The ray tracing based method for physical and geometrical optics is the asymptotic solver suitable for very large structures, RCS calculation, installed antenna performance, and coupling for interference analysis. A host of other solver technologies covering the full spectrum electromagnetic simulation are available for the user from a single user interface. State of the art high performance computing, such as distributed cluster computing, MPI, and graphics based acceleration, are also supported. So, have you ever stopped to think about how your phone connects you to your friends or family? Is that magic? No, it's all got to do with electromagnetic fields. If you think about mobile devices and their link to a cell phone tower or of remotely controlled consumer electronic devices or even smart appliances, the key technology which provides the wireless connection between all these things is antennas. Anything that has to communicate wirelessly needs antennas and for any device to be smart, you need antennas. Antennas and the systems behind them need to work well all the time in complex and dynamic environments. When they don't work well, well, things can get expensive for device manufacturers. And simulation is used right now for antenna design by most players in this market on the mobile device as well as on the base station side. Simulation is not only used for validation, but at every design stage, 
from early concept evaluation to compliance testing right at the end. The reason for moving to millimeter wave is the high bandwidth availability, and this hopefully is going to facilitate high data rate communication. Design goal for mobile phone is to have a full spherical coverage, which means high gain pattern in all directions because of the user orientation and position relative to the base station. We should think about multipath FX as well and the ability to switch between multiple beams to cover the full sphere. The design challenge is integration of antennas, which are mainly chip antenna arrays inside the device behind the cover, which is dielectric, while the operation challenge relates to how the user operates the device. Hence, physical prototyping is not sufficient. One of the other key constraints is the safety of the operator who is handling the device. And in this case, the design goal would be performance and compliance of the device um, meeting the legal requirements of exposure to humans. And since fields cannot be measured inside the human body, simulation is essential. So let us look at an example of a chip antenna concept where we have our antenna in package for millimeter wave 5G, and it is a two by two array of stack up of patch antennas. They have dual polarization, and here we can see the different layers of the packaging to the distribution network to the RFIC footprint. The hope with the antenna in package is that as a discrete module, it could be used in different platforms and reduces the integration process to the antenna placement since no matching and RF feeding are required. But one quickly realizes that there is more to the integration than where to place it in the device. The power distribution network is also included on chip due to high insertion loss at 28 gigahertz, which is about 0.12 dB per millimeter for strip line in FR4. And this is further degraded by surface roughness. So it is important to consider all these aspects while designing the chip antenna. As we can see from the far field pattern at the bore site of this device here, um, we see there's a uniform uh, far field pattern that is radiating out of the antenna where there is no back cover. But as soon as we add the plastic cover at the back, we see a high distortion in the radiation pattern of the antenna. So the question is, why is this? And how do we deal with it? What happens if we add a glass cover? And how would the different materials affect the performance of the antenna? Is it possible to add a metal cover? Well, this could be tricky. And we have another webinar that goes into the details of this on 5G antenna design. But first, let's start by visualizing the electric field at 28 gigahertz. As we can see here, the antenna is radiating in the main direction that is supposed to be the intended radiation direction. But we also see that part of the energy radiates back due to reflections from the dielectric layer behind. And also at the 28 gigahertz frequency, we can see that the dielectric acts as a waveguide and guides the wave away from the main radiating source and causes secondary spurious radiations at the edges of the cover. This probably is not only due to the phone and the dielectric design, but also perhaps due to the imperfect chip antenna design. So the next question we ask is, how do we model the human body at such high frequencies? The human body on an average is about 1.7 meters uh, in height, and if you look at the free space wavelength at this frequency, uh, it's about 17 millimeters. And if you look at the wavelength inside the human body, due to its high dielectric permittivity, the wavelength is reduced at least by 10 times. So this translates into a thousand wavelength height for the entire human body. And this can be really challenging to simulate. So since the primary interest is fields outside the body, we don't need to model the interior of the body and can simplify this with a coated PEC material instead. 
of interest is to get human body models with different poses in order to test all these different usage scenarios. The Katia human design on the 3D experience platform assists in this task. It allows interaction with other devices, example, gripping of a phone, which is very nice for our particular application. So it allows the user to configure the different postures of interest with a click of a button. And once we have all these different poses of interest, we can export the human models to CST Studio Suite. And then position the phone automatically relative to the body by using anchor points in the system and assembly modeling framework. So the phone is brought in from another project here. And we can very easily align the phone and the user's hand with a click of a button using the anchor point simulation. We can then configure the phone in different angles and different positions based on uh, normal user uh, scenarios here. So once we have the assembled model, it would be easy for us to run a simulation as a next step here. So the way to efficiently solve this complex problem is to break it out into small pieces. As a first step, we can look at the performance of the phone being held in the hand. And then we can run this using our time domain solution to extract what we call as the near field sources of this setup. And as a second step, we can actually place this near field sources uh, at the relevant positions and run a full body simulation using the most appropriate solver technology, which in this case could be either time domain, integral equation based or asymptotic based ray tracing. The hybrid workflow thus hides the fine detail of the phone from the large model simulation. Next, we can look at different uh, user scenarios where if you look at the far field pattern of the antenna in free space with the phone alone, you can see a nice spherical smooth pattern, which is what is intended. But as soon as you model the hand, and the hand holding the phone, you can see some distortions in the far field pattern. And these distortions uh, get progressively worse when the whole human body model is included because of the local grounding effect. We can also look at blockage effects where we analyze how different finger positions holding the phone can affect the performance of the antenna. So the orange area that you see highlighted here is the position where the array or the chip antenna is located. And the user's finger typically blocks a portion of this array. And then we can notice that the antenna performance is ki kind of affected, but it still should work in its intended environment. Evaluation of potential use cases could actually guide antenna placement. So CD CST Studio Suite offers end-to-end -end antenna design and simulation solutions. So the prototyping can be done using a tool called Antenna Magus. Uh, we look into the details of Antenna Magus in just a bit. So once we have a model from Antenna Magus, it can be exported into CST Studio Suite where the design can be modified and we can build additional geometries around the antenna and we can perform a matching network analysis, for instance. So this allows to tune and optimize your location and performance of your antenna. We can also do a multi-physics simulation to understand the thermal and mechanical aspects of the antenna performance. And finally, this optimized design can be installed on an environment such as a vehicle uh, where the radiation pattern can severely be distorted like we see here on the right. So talking a little bit more into detail of antenna magus, so in this case, we have an example of a smart projector, which is a home connected multimedia device. And we require a Wi-Fi and a Bluetooth antenna for connectivity. So the question is, where do we get these antenna models from? So Antenna Magus is a library of built-in antenna models, and it allows you to quickly synthesize 
possible candidates that you can then uh, integrate with your system. So in this case, we choose the smart devices and mobile communications based on the specifications we can see here. And further, we can choose different bands of operation. So we choose the Wi-Fi or the WLAN band here. And once we choose that, it allows you to further select different channels based on the frequency bands of interest. And in this case, we are choosing the first option here, which is corresponding to the 802.11b standard. So then we can see that Antenna Magus has automatically filtered to 33 possible candidates of antennas, which could fit this description based on the keywords that were entered. So we want compact antennas, we want them integrated, and then we want them to operate on the Wi-Fi band. We can further customize the antenna search by using specific keywords such as omnidirectional because we want coverage in the entire 360 directions. And we can also specify a spatial constraint, which is a really nice feature where you say, I want my antenna to fit within a 10 by 10 by 20 cubic block. And then we can see that the filtered search has narrowed down to 22 options from the 33 we saw before. And the user can browse through all these different options and read about the antenna performance. So it gives you a very quick summary about what kind of performance you can expect from a typical antenna like this. So this could be polarization, gain, performance bandwidth, impedance, etc. It also allows you to compare all the different uh, candidates on a single user interface. So in this case, we are comparing six different candidates to look at how well they are matched at the frequencies of interest and what is their radiation pattern in different cut planes. So it helps you to make uh, easier trade-off decisions so as to choose and narrow down on the best possible candidate for your application. So antenna construction can then be done in CST Studio Suite where the source could be Antenna Magus for the Antenna Parameterized Model, or it could be from a CAD software such as CATIA or SOLIDWORKS, and it brings in all the parameters by default. So you will be able to optimize and do a parameter sweep study on your antenna design within CST Studio Suite. We also have a characteristic mode analysis software, which uh, gives you a different perspective on designing and fine-tuning your antenna performance. So in this case, we can see that this particular microstrip patch antenna has a meandering structure, and we can essentially excite two different modes at different frequencies. So we can see that the surface currents on these meandering structures is quite different at these two modes. So this helps give insight about what kind of modes that can be excited and uh, it also creates useful modes that can be used to do a multiple input, multiple output, or a MIMO uh, type of antenna configuration. It helps reduce coupling between antennas. And this is especially important for electrically small antennas to enhance the bandwidth. So by placing your feed locations and by choosing the slots and other geometric constraints, uh, very carefully, you will be able to optimize your antenna performance. This is fully integrated within CST Studio Suite and is complementary to other solvers like the time domain and frequency domain solvers. So we can not only simulate a single element of the antenna, but we can also do multiple antenna systems uh, for MIMO antenna design concepts. So we can actually start with a single antenna element and build an entire full array uh, using what we call as a array task. So this allows the user to very quickly choose which elements uh, should be activated and which should be passivated. We can also do a unit cell uh, analysis on a single element to study the infinite array simulation using periodic boundary conditions. So this gives us a very quick uh, analysis into what are the blind spots that this particular array may be having. Once we have our antenna optimized uh, and uh, ready to go, we can install this antenna on a platform, such as a vehicle, an aircraft, or a ship. 
So the workflow here is uh, pretty straightforward where we start with our single element of the antenna or the antenna array, optimize it, and then place that on these large environments. So we support both the full wave brute force simulation where we mesh all the geometry with a single solver using um, graphics processing cards, which can help accelerate the simulation. Or the, the more smarter way to do this would be to use the hybrid solution using field source interfaces. So in this case, we uh, solve the problem more efficiently without having to mesh the fine details of the geometry. But at the same time, we do not compromise on the accuracy and achieve the results in a faster computational time. And if you look at the results, we can expect the full coupling parameters here. So the full S parameters can be achieved to further do an interference task kind of analysis. If you look a little more closely into the applications for the automotive industry, where the automotive radar is an essential and a hot topic, we provide the complete technology for the automotive radar simulation. Again, we start here with the antenna, and then we can integrate the radome in front of the antenna uh, and look at how the radome affects the performance of the antenna. Finally, the whole system can be integrated behind the bumper of your vehicle, and this would be solved using something like the asymptotic solver, where you're looking at thousands of wavelengths in electrical sizes. So if you look at the radar application at 77 gigahertz for target detection, uh, we are looking at a realistic scenario here where we have the car in the rear uh, trying to read the object or the target in front of it. So incident rays that are launched from the rear car uh, can be visualized um, on the object in front of it here. Since the ground has no effect on the radiation pattern in the azimuthal plane, uh, we can essentially look at the far field above the half plane here. And if you look at the plot on the right side, we see a small distortion in the far field pattern where the target exists. And this kind of information is useful to study the angular position of the target as well as uh, the distance of the target from the source. We can also look at the rays that are reflected off from the target at different observation angles. And in this case, we see that the green rays are the first order reflections that are bouncing off from the ground as well as from the car, which is the target in front. So this allows us to have an idea about what are the hotspots of the target of, or the object in front and where we can expect maximum reflection. We can also do a scenogram study where we study the range, uh, the radar range as a function of angle as well as um, the uh, distance between the target. So in this case, we are actually looking at the RCS value as a function of both the radar range as well as the scan angle. So this would typically be a 1D plot of uh, different scan angles, and then we would stitch them up together automatically into this nice colorful 2D map plot. So going back into antennas, uh, if you consider space applications where we have reflector dishes on satellites, these dishes uh, experience very high temperature gradients uh, because of the sunlight and the darkness on either sides of the dish. So this can cause differential heating of the dish and the differential heating can change the structural performance. And the, the deformed mesh can then be imported into the electromagnetic solver to understand how this changes the electromagnetic performance. So we offer the end-to-end -end simulation workflow starting from electromagnetics to thermal to structural mechanics. And on the right side, we can also look at charged particle effects of horn antennas that are installed in satellites. So we can see uh, effects like multipaction and corona discharge when stray electrons actually bounce off of the surface, causing a multipaction effect that can eventually damage the device. So Dasso Systems offers the 3D experience platform where all of these workflows come together on a single user interface. So the engineer can start with integrated antenna design to rapidly uh, develop prototypes and validate them. And then we can look at co-site interference where if you have multiple 
uh, antennas installed on a platform, they could interfere with each other. So we need to understand uh, the different scenarios where this could happen. And finally, if a user is involved, we need to make sure that the device is compliant and safe to use. So the SAR optimization or the specific absorption rate optimization and certification is also part of this um, integrated antenna engineering and certification workflow. So let's switch gears here a little bit and talk about uh, the solutions that Simulia CST offers for filter designs. So CST Studio Suite offers the most complete range of tools for all stages of filter design. So all of the tools are integrated in a single environment and allows efficient workflow setup. So this involves synthesis of the filter in terms of coupling matrix, realization of the filter in terms of the 3D geometry, tuning and optimization of the filter performance, and finally, multi-physics effects. So the coupling matrix-based tuning method is a well-known method in the industry. So the matrix extraction can be done using um, the filter design 3D tool, which is integrated very nicely within CST Studio Suite. So typical input for the matrix extraction would be a goal such as your S-parameter matrix. So the changes in the coupling matrix that can then be imported into eigenmode solver within CST Studio Suite, which calculates the eigenmodes of the structure. The changes required in the 3D model are then carried forward to a full 3D electromagnetic simulation software, such as the finite element method or the frequency domain solver. And the new parameters can then be uh, exported back into the FD3D tool in order to get the new matrix extraction. So this kind of workflow is very unique and it offers very powerful advantages to do filter design and optimization. Of course, traditional tuning methods such as group delay, um, inverse chirp, Z transform, port tuning, and direct optimization is also supported. So when we talk about filter optimization and fine tuning, uh, we have various inbuilt algorithms that automatically do the optimization for the user. So in this case, we have a built-in trust region framework-based optimizer that has 18 parameters to be optimized and we can see that it very efficiently does this within 10 steps. So the blue curve is the pre-tuned performance of the filter. And after these 18 parameters are optimized, we can see the green curve, which is the intended performance of the filter. And this is a very complicated uh, structure where we have a coupled resonant cavity structure, and it could be really um, difficult to tune such a structure without this kind of optimization. And one of the key features that enables um, this moving mesh is uh, for filter design and optimization would be to actually move the mesh on very small geometric changes that you can see on the bottom right, rather than to do a remeshing as on the uh, top right. So when we do a remeshing, this introduces mesh noise into the system, and this can actually degrade the optimization process. So this is a unique technology that CST provides for filter design and simulation. So if you look at an example of this uh, filter here for the mesh noise, this is a simple, simple triplet filter. And if you switch off this moving mesh feature, we can see the red curve where the optimization never converges even after 200 steps. Whereas the green curve is with the moving mesh feature on, and we can see the very quick convergence uh, within 30 or 40 steps. If you look at the number of mesh cells that is uh, used to solve this problem, without the moving mesh feature, again, we see that the mesh cells keeps changing with every optimization step here. Whereas there is no change in mesh at all when we, uh, in the number of mesh cells, when we look at the moving mesh feature turned on. So this is, uh, a very generic issue, any FEM-based code that CST addresses um, very nicely. Finally, we can look at uh, how a measurement setup can be linked to a simulation such as FD3D in, within CST. So we can connect a VNA uh, to a computer where FD3D is installed, 
and the coupling matrix is extracted from real-time measured S parameters. So in this case, we are actually uh, using the measured S parameter as input to extract the coupling matrix in FD3D in real time. Uh, there are error bars within FD3D that indicate how far the couplings and self resonances are detuned. So this gives the user an idea about uh, real time tuning of their filter, and they can further use this data into CST with the coupling matrix extraction. So to conclude, CST Studio Suite offers the most complete technology for electromagnetic simulation of microwave and RF components and antennas. There are some unique features such as a user-friendly user interface uh, where all the solvers are embedded uh, and the user does not have to learn different tools in order to use these different technologies. Antenna Magus is a very nice tool for quick antenna synthesis and parameterized model export in order to do further um, optimizations and uh, uh, fine-tuning within CST Studio Suite. Full bidirectional coupling between all the high-frequency solvers is enabled, and thus this allows very efficient solving of very large models with fine details. The moving mesh feature combined with optimization using FD3D coupling matrix is a very, very unique feature in the market. We also support state-of-the-art HPC options with the latest NVIDIA GPU acceleration. So that finishes uh, my end of the webinar, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. All right, Wayne and Ryan, thank you for that presentation. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some questions that have come in from our audience. And as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, just simply type it into the lower section of your Q&A window and click Submit. Now, our first question asks, how does Antenna Magus link to CS Studio Suite? Dwayne, Narayan, would Ryan. you like to take that? Um, yeah, thank you, uh, Steve. So Antenna Magus is a synthesis tool um, that uh, automatically exports a fully parameterized model um, into CST Studio Suite. Um, so you can run further optimizations and uh, do an install performance analysis. And this is um, very useful for the user uh, if you're um, looking for some initial design parameters or you, you don't know where to start. So. Okay, great, thank you. Um, our next question asks, can SolidWorks model be imported into CS2, CST Studio Suite? Yes, SOLIDWORKS and CST Studio Suite uh, share a bidirectional link between them. So if you have a fully parameterized model um, and when you change a geometric parameter in um, uh, CST Studio Suite, it automatically changes um, and updates that in SOLIDWORKS as well. Um, so this saves a lot of uh, data exchange and um, disk space when you have to save files um, and then re-import them. Um, so that's a very efficient uh, workflow. Okay, thank you. Next question here states, um, regulation of intentional radiators has not considered recent science with health effects. I suspect levels in North America may have to be revised downward. Now, is there control of human body models um, that may be user-defined? Yes, so CST Studio Suite allows for uh, the users to have and define their own uh, body models. So if you have a voxel model, uh, you can import that into CST using the voxel import. Um, you can also define uh, human material properties. So we have an inbuilt library with all the different tissue materials and uh, their associated properties. Uh, but you can also define uh, your own parameters and bring them in uh, into CST. Okay, great. And the next question asks, does CST offer any human models? Yes. Uh, CST offers a comprehensive biomodels package, which includes uh, voxel as well as uh, CAD-based human models. And these could be either homogeneous uh, or detailed heterogeneous with all the tissues and the associated material properties. Okay, great, thank you. Um, our next question asks, where might I find mathematical equations describing the radiation patterns of antennas? 
so the radiation patterns of uh, standard antennas uh, like dipoles or horns uh, should be available uh, in any popular uh, microwave engineering handbook. Um, uh, but CST also has an inbuilt uh, help section uh, which documents uh, the details of um, uh, you know how the equations are set up and uh, w what each of these results mean. Okay, thank you, Narayan. Um, next question here: um, Can you explain about the system and assembly modeling framework? So the system and assembly modeling uh, framework is an interface for bringing together different parts of a large system. Uh, for example, if you have a radar antenna array installed on a car bumper, uh, the antenna array can be uh, simulated and optimized separately and then assembled on the car chassis uh, using anchor points, uh, which we saw in the webinar. And this allows to automatically align these different components uh, to form a system um, on, on this platform. Okay, thank you. Um, next question is, uh, how does the moving mesh feature help in filter design and optimization? Uh, so the moving mesh feature in CST is unique in the market for filter design and optimization. Um, so if you have an increasingly crowded systems of uh, transceivers, and this is more so with the advent of uh, the 5G technology, uh, filters with high dynamic range and sensitivity um, are crucial, but they can be challenging to design and optimize. Uh, and this is due to the strict insertion and isolation requirements, and also due to the frequency resolution between um, uh, the transmission poles and zeros. Uh, so this can cause, uh, you know, many iterations uh, to converge with very small geometric changes. So the moving mesh feature avoids remeshing the geometry on these small changes, and thus eliminate, eliminates mesh noise. Okay, great. Thank you, Narayan. And with that, we are going to wrap up our live Q&A right there. We'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Take care and have a great rest of your day.